Hello, welcome to EPG Partshala. Today, as we know, the world has become one. We have become boundaryless, and all thanks to computers and internet. But have you ever thought and wondered that the more information we process, the more information we get, and very easily just on a click of a mouse? But there are certain pros and cons that are attached to every aspect of life, and with this particular aspect also. Where we have information, where we have internet, there are pros and cons both. My dear friends, we need to understand that today we are in a world where information is so easily accessible and easily uh, falsifiable as well. So we need to realize that if are we safe, are we really secure of our information? Today, in this particular module, we shall be discussing certain issues that are attached with internet and its usage, where you need to be secure, you need to be safe when you use your information. So today we will be highlighting on the three aspects that is the issues which are attached to internet, namely copyright, plagiarism, and hacking. I'm sure you guys must have heard about it what these terms are, but it is very important for common people like us to understand because on every inch of internet we are being accessed by some other party about whom we have no idea. Let us now understand these modules, these units one by one. First of all, let us know what copyright means. Copyright means that the owner has a complete control of what can be done and to what extent with his or her original intellectual work. The original work is protected under copyright and thus it cannot be stolen or copied without the permission of the owner. According to the definition Fishman in 2008, he says that copyright is a legal device that provides a creator of a work of art or any literature or any work that conveys information or ideas, the right to control how the work is used. Again by Lauren in 2000, it has been said that the intent of copyright is to advance the progress of knowledge by giving the author of a work an economic incentive to create new works. We also know that copyright provides the owner an exclusive right to reproduce the original work or prepare derivative works from the original work and distribute it publicly. For example, if somebody wants to develop a play on your short story, you have the right to license your work and permit others to use it and get paid for it. It's as simple as that. Now, let us understand how exactly do we obtain the copyright. You have copyright protection as soon as you make the expression in a tangible format. Copyright is automatic and requires no paperwork. Let us understand what all are the works that can be copyrighted. 1. Fixation. 2. Originality, three, minimal creativity. Now let us go in details of each one, one by one. Fixation, the items must be fixed in some or the other way. It can be done either by writing something on a piece of paper, posting online, or storing on a computer or phone, or on an audio or a video device. The second one, originality. The work must be original. Originality can be a novel or a student's email message to a professor. Both are considered examples of original expression. 3. Minimal creativity. The work must include something that is above and beyond the original. A reference to the original work that is used to discuss a new concept would be considered original. Let us now understand the protection that is provided by the copyright. Copyright provides the authors a fairly substantial control over their work and protect it from being misused. The four basic protections are enlisted below. A. The right to protect and create copies of the original work. B. The right to sell or distribute copies of the work. C. The right to prepare new works based on the protected work. Last but not the least, the right to publish the protected work in public. Now let us move on to the limitations and certain work that cannot be copyrighted. First, works done in the public domain which includes ideas, facts as they are intangible, words, names, slogans or other short phrases also cannot be copyrighted. Again, government works which include judicial opinions, public ordinances, administrative rulings cannot be copyrighted. Works created by federal government employees as a part of their official responsibility also cannot be copyrighted. Now, despite of providing maximum protection to the original work, copyright also has some of the limitations of which fair use is the most significant on the copyright holder's right as there are no set guidelines for it. However, there are exceptions and limitations also to the copyright law that people are allowed to use copyrighted materials for the purpose of criticism, 
recommend research, news reporting and teaching. Now having known the limitations, we shall now move further to understand the steps to protect the copyright. First one being, ensure your work is properly marked. This means that although a copyright notice is not required, you must display a notice which shows that you have an awareness of copyright and take violations of your work seriously. Second one, register your work. You should register your work as it helps you to provide a variable proof in case of copyright violation. Three, keep or register supporting evidences. Supporting evidences may help to prove that you are the original creator of material. It falls into two categories. They are, one is the evolution of ideas. That means, this is an evidence of the progression of the work, which can be in the form of the drafts, synopsis, rough recordings, sketches, etc. Another type is footprints or watermarking. This is normally an evidence inserted into finished documents. Now, let us understand a new term that is copyright infringement or copyright violation. Copyright infringement occurs when someone copies a copyrighted work without permission and either passes it off as his or her own work or uses substantial portions of the work without the permission and without fair use. To prove copyright violation, you need to prove that you are the owner of the work and that the work is entitled to copyright protection. This means that your work has the requisite level of originality. If you register and obtain your certificate of copyright within five years of creating the work, then that is the evidence of the validity of the copyright. The second thing that you need to prove is that there has been copying of your work. When a work becomes available for use without permission from a copyright owner, it is said to be in the public domain. And this happens because their copyrights have expired. All that was about copyright. Now, let us move to the second issue or the problem when we use internet, that is plagiarism. Plagiarism is when a project is submitted as if it is his own creation, whereas the project was prepared by copying somebody else's work. Let us now discuss the meaning of plagiarism in detail. According to Merriam's Webster Online Dictionary, to plagiarize means the following. A. To steal one's original work and pass it off as their own. B. To use someone else's production without crediting the source. C. To commit literary theft, that is, using the contents of the original work and not citing the original source. To present your work as new and original idea, in simpler terms, plagiarism involves both stealing someone else's work and also lying about it. It is the use of author's original words and ideas as though they were your own. All of the following can also be considered as plagiarism. Copying someone else's work as your own work or failing to put a quotation mark in the quotations or giving incorrect information about the source of a quotation. It can also be changing the words but copying the sentence structure of a source without giving any credit. It could also be when you're copying so many words and ideas from a source that it makes up the majority of your work whether you give credit or not. After having known the concept of plagiarism, we shall now move further to the consequences. Following could be the consequences of plagiarism, so we need to be very careful. A. Failing in the assignment or getting poor or lower grades. Failing in the class or even detention. Expulsion or restication from the school. Termination from workplace. Court appearances and fines or maybe both in some cases. Embarrassment, humiliation faced due to the above mentioned charges. Since we have very strong consequences, let us all be protected of plagiarism and protect others too. Let us now understand that how do we exactly detect the content of plagiarism. There are two ways. One, identify distinctive phrases or if you can say two to three words in students' papers. Search for them using a search engine such as Google to detect any kind of theft from the original work. The second type could be search for a relevant subject using a web search tool or any well-known page mill which are the sites under various topics. For example, CD-ROM, reference tools, etc. Once you find a suspect source, use your browser's find tool to locate distinctive phrases from students' papers. In these two ways, you can easily detect plagiarism and can be safe. Now let us understand how do we prevent our document from being plagiarized. 1. Plan your paper. It is very important that you plan your paper, your document. If you know that you are going to use other sources of information, you need to plan how you are going to use them. You should balance your own ideas and other sources to support it. B. Take notes. Take notes from all the sources for a research paper so that you have much of information organized before you begin writing. It also helps in giving credit to the person's work. 
3. Make it clear who said what. Prepare for a research paper by taking thorough notes using different colored fonts, pens or pencils for each one and making sure that you clearly distinguish your own ideas from those you found elsewhere. Also, get in the habit of marking page numbers and make sure that you record bibliographic information or either web addresses for every source. 4. Know how to paraphrase. A paraphrase is a restatement in your own words. Changing a few words of the original sentences does not make your writing a legitimate paraphrase. You must change both the words and the sentence structure of the original without changing the content. Paraphrase passages still require citations because the ideas have come from another source, even if you're putting them in your own words. Last but not the least, cite references and use footnote. A citation is the way you tell your readers that certain material in your work has come from another source. It also gives your readers the information necessary to find that source again. Giving credit to the original author by citing sources is the only way to use people's work without plagiarism. By following all the other steps, you can be really secure of plagiarism or being plagiarized. Now we have seen all the two aspects of the internet issues. The last one that we need to deal with is hacking. Let us know what hacking exactly is. Internet security is one of the major fears of computer users in the times today. They mainly fear the exposure of their secure documents and information and also of the hackers who break through into their security system to get information via unethical act. Hacking is illegally accessing someone else's computer without permission, regardless of the activity or the intent. Indeed, it's a dangerous one. Now, what do these hackers exactly do? They might invade your privacy or might even delete information. They may even damage the files or impersonate your own computer. They could also decrease owner's right to income. Having known what exactly hacking is all about, let us now see certain steps that we could prevent ourselves or our work from being hacked. One, tough passwords. You need to have a separate password for each account so that even if one account is hacked, all of your other important information is not accessed by hackers. The problem is that it is tough to remember dozens of passwords. But to help you with this, there are a variety of third-party software programs that will create and store passwords for you. So it's as simple as that. Next point, authentication. Many email providers offer a two-factor authentication options in your settings. When you sign on with your password, a message is sent to your phone that prompts you to enter an additional access code which you can use. This is the second authentication process. Third, change your behavior. Oversharing may cause harm. Things like birth dates, graduation years, residential addresses, etc. can be used to access your information and avoid using and sharing these details about your life to strangers. Fourth, keep your backup always ready. Use an external hard drive or an online service. Being hacked can be the gateway to identity theft or even worse. Fifth, keep your email secure. Your email is the center of your online life. You should keep it most secure. Your email is hacked, that means hackers, can access to your bank accounts as well. Change passwords frequently and use lengthy password. Your password should be changed every month or it is at least advised to change it after every two months and made difficult to guess. The length of your password is more important than its complexity. Remember, longer password means more work for hacking software and Hackers generally want quick results. Next, update your system. Programs like AgroPet PDF Reader or Microsoft, Java are heavily abused by hackers. So keep these programs up to date and uninstall software when no longer in use. Next, use antivirus. Use antivirus programs as many of them provide protection from spyware, malware and other viruses. You could also stick to secured sites. Web addresses that begin with HTTP use the basic hypertext transfer protocol. But remember, with HTTPS, the S on the end stands for secure. It authenticates the website and web server you are communicating with. Be email cautious. Many a times, we all receive emails and do not really know who the source is. So never open an email especially an attachment from an unknown source. Infections can come from already hacked friends too. For example, a hacker sends an infected message to everyone in the victim's online address 
this book, open its attachment and you unwillingly become an infectious spreader too. Be suspicious if a friend appears to have sent you an email with no subject line because a subject line that only says in capital RE or FW or is uncategoristically vague or brief especially if the email text contains an internet link. Next, be careful of what you click. Avoid clicking links that promise free prizes or free gifts. Be cautious of the third party security alerts. If you are browsing the internet and a website's pop-ups tells you you have a virus, it could be a trap to get you to download the harmful files. Some hackers hire call centers overseas. They claim to be from Microsoft or whatever. They may even say, we have detected a virus on your machine, go to the website, etc, etc. This gets them inside your machine. Never allow them to do so. Next, be cautious of software downloads. If you are getting software at a discount or a free online, there's lots of pirated software out there and there's possibility of some sort of malware in it. When you're ordering any kind of software for any device, buy it conventionally, like from any manufacturer's website, and not through any links. Next, be cautious about USB flash drives. You may get this as a gift from someone, but it could have some other software stowed away. Once on your computer, it may get access to all the files it will simply infect your information. Any peripheral connected to a computer can easily infect it. Last but not the least, be alert about apps. Be careful what you put on your phone. If you go to a website, you do not know what you're buying for 99 cents could be designed by any hacker around in the world. Let us not use such unconventional ways. Always use reputable applications and select them Cautiously, the number of platforms like Windows, Apple's and Android with app stores is increasing. But there are some bad alternative app stores also for Android out there. Users should stick with the official one for their platform. Having discussed all the three that is copyright, plagiarism and hacking in detail, we hope that we remain safe and secure for the rest of our life and also help others to be safe. Because when we are accessing information, remember, there is somewhere, someone down there on the other side of the fence who could take an undue advantage of your information. Be safe. Thank you so much.